Welcome from my side. I'm representing today, together with my colleague, uh, Rick Egging, uh, the SETNAV project. I'm Gustav Fesch from uh, Vienna University of Technology and we are acting as coordinator uh, of the project, which is called SETNAV. So it's a sort of navigation through the complex teams, topics that the set plan is looking about. And since we were asked to pick up a specific topic also for our speech we have chosen uh, have been assigned to the topic linking models um, well so I start with okay um, so what would be the outline uh, of my speech and our speech I would give a short overview on the project itself then pass on to my colleague when it comes to the more technical issues, when it comes to how the linking of the models uh, and some of the key questions behind why, what, uh, so what's the purpose of doing the linkages, uh, when these questions have to be answered and finally I will then pick up again to tell you then more, introduce how we are going to practically handling this data exchange and how we are also dealing with uh, it's not only an internal data exchange it will also serve as a public database where we show the outcomes where we show our inputs uh, so setnav uh, it's the whole title navigating the roadmap for clean secure and efficient energy innovation the project has started about a year ago and it uh, will last in total for three years, so we have one third uh, of the whole duration done until now. It's a project where 16 participants are nicely spread all over Europe, are working, are collaborating, and as said before, we from Vienna act here as coordinator. We are tackling here some key pillars, how we what we are doing in SETNAV and that's nicely shown on that slide. So as a first element in SETNAV we try to improve, to enhance our capabilities. Our capabilities on modeling specifically. Uh, so in that sense we also have a series of workshops, of expert workshops on specific modeling topics but you will hear more on that later on. Then we are going to conduct strategic policy analysis. We first will do that by means of narrow formed case studies where we look at specific topics and then later on we come to the more integrated holistic assessment part that's done in the second stage of the project. And as a key element of all uh, we also have to involve the broader uh, so audience, we are tackling, uh, we are holding a series of workshops, stakeholder workshops, where we don't uh, leave it up to the modeling community only, but where we involve industry representative policy makers, stakeholders from the various fields, <coughs> and where we exchange on what we are doing, why we are doing that, and also get their feedback on if it's done uh, in a nicely way. And that slide just shows you the how we structure the overall workflow in the project. So we try to cover the different angles of the energy system and it's always the question how to split up here. We decided at the end to make a split in demand supply infrastructure and then have as a part of the analysis also of course the Economic assessment, I mean microeconomic decisions are in every energy model of course, but the macroeconomic view is then also provided. And we also add on the global perspective since the core focus of our analysis is on Europe and we have one dedicated work package where we look at the global developments. I said part of our analysis is doing case studies that overloaded slides just tries to show how we then link up the case studies, how we split them up and link them to the different uh, quite broad 
area of teams that are in the set plan. And so we are trying to tackle here the different teams with one or more case studies and then look at the outcomes of the case studies and do later on the integrated assessment. And that already involves a lot of modeling. It involves a lot of models within the certain case studies and later on it gets more complex when it comes to the integrated part. So I'm handing that over uh, to my colleague Ruth to tell you more on how we are doing that practically and also the question why. Thank you Gustav. <coughs> so I'm Ruth Egging. Uh, I'm working at the Norwegian Univers University of Science and Technology and my main contribution to the SETNA project has been that I came up with the acronym. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, we have uh, two posters in the poster session tomorrow and we have a focus session on linking uh, and uh, yeah, that means there's going to be some overlap between the different things presented by us and uh, of course it's impossible to have a good perspective on this in uh, just a few hours even. So what I want to do is to give you a flavor of some of the challenges and issues that come up when you want different models to talk to each other. So why do we have, uh, yeah. why do we want to link models? Uh, we want to link models because we need a consistent and coherent quantitative representation of pathways across models. If you have different models and different modeling teams working with their own data sets uh, and you want to then later reconcile the different starting points, uh, that, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> and some of the reasons are that models have different modeling approaches uh, in, in varying ways. You can have uh, static versus dynamic models, deterministic versus stochastic models, and you can have uh, open loop versus closed loop models, etc. <coughs> then additionally, models have their own, uh, their own foci. Uh, strengths and limitations, right, not weaknesses. And often the type of modeling approach you Im, uh, have implemented uh, that imposes limits on how much you can cover and in what detail you can cover it. Very often uh, when you have this portfolio of models, one model is good at something that another model is not so good. If all your models are good at the same thing, then you should just stop developing most of them. And uh, another thing that can be an issue is units of measurement. A very clear one is between CGEs and energy systems models, where the one model talks in monetary units and the other model talks in physical units. And if you want data exchange between those types of models, you have to uh, look at level of detail, you have to look at scope, and you also have to look at how do I transfer a kilowatt hour into a dollar or a euro or a kroner. And in the SETNAV project, we have about uh, 15 different models, different model types. I will uh, show them later. And we want to use, for all of these models, their relative strengths. And also use outcomes of one model as input for other models, and then make sure that it becomes a consistent uh, total set. And then there is the problem that we have yeah, different uh, scopes, different granularities, etc. The range of models we have are, is a number of macroeconomic models, different energy system and, and sector models, as well as two models, uh, instruments to assess risks. This is not just three types of models, because already in the macroeconomic models we have econometric models and we have a CGE model. Uh, in the energy systems models we have models that look at the demand se sectors, uh, industry, <coughs> transport, and we have models that look at the energy carriers. Some look at multiple energy carriers, for example Multimod. Others look at the specific energy carrier or, or two of them. And in any single case study we do, there are at least two, three, but up to seven, eight models that should analyze the same kind of starting point. One of the examples that I want to bring up here is a case study that looks at how to better use the inherent flexibility in electricity and gas uh, supply systems if you also look at them together. Um, there's a lot of potential flexibility, for example, in the Norwegian offshore pipeline system. Uh, line pack is, uh, is, is one option where you short-term increase the pressure in a pipeline and this could potentially be used to 
deal with short-term fluctuations, both predictable and, uh, and uncertain. Um, and to do an analysis like that, you need to have a pretty good grip on the natural gas system and the electricity system, not even thinking about renewables or demand side. So what we have here is a TPES, which is a detailed model for capacity expansion in the grid, and it's uh, managed by Comias. We have Empire, which is a long-term stochastic model which uh, looks at the electricity system at the country level, which considers both production and expansions. So we have two models here that do grid expansion, one at the, I think, nuts three level, one at the country level, has to be reconciled somehow. Uh, the one model has production for a good number of stochastic scenarios, and the other model wants one input for production in every time period. But then those time periods are shorter again. Well, these are just two of the models that are shown on this slide, where we already see several issues when it comes to data exchange. The second case study I want to briefly illustrate here is the macroeconomic consequences, where we have first a bunch of models that look into more detail into the energy system, and the things that happen in the energy system affect the broader economy. So. We have uh, production levels, demand, uh, investments that need to be accounted for in the broader macroeconomic models. So we need to go, as I had illustrated before, from physical units to monetary units. Then the, uh, the macroeconomic models do their analysis and in this case we have a soft link bringing feedback from what is the macroeconomic impact. Now, you cannot invest that much in the energy system, that money is not available, so one of the starting points there should be adjusted. Then, the linking models challenges uh, are very connected to those different scopes, levels of details, modeling approaches, etc. And most generally, I think there is a scope mismatch, and that can be a scope in terms of geography. One model looks at Germany, another model looks at Europe, another model looks at the whole world. It can be sectors. The building uh, specific model has individual buildings, and uh, in the gas model, it is not even, there is not even a sector which is called buildings. We have a res residential sector. Time horizons, uh, of course, can be very different. <coughs> Some models just look at here and now, operational situation, other models plan 40 years into the future. Then, when considering granularity, in what level of detail are things um, uh, modeled? I think I discussed some of that already when I discussed scope. I'll skip over the rest. And then, something like information structure. Um, how are you going to reconcile the results and, and inputs for, from a deterministic model with a stochastic model or an open loop versus a closed closed loop model? Now, additionally, uh, social welfare versus game theoretic. If one model considers oligopolistic market structure and another model goes for the best, yeah, least cost optimization, can you still exchange data between those? two models and think that they come from a consistent underlying uh, starting point or storyline. Linking models, um, this is a one slide topic that tries to summarize way too much, but uh, you can in principle, have, in principle have soft, hard and integrated and this is what I think it should be because I know others have a slightly different perspective on this. But from my perspective, a soft link means there is manual exchange and or manual adjustments of the data being exchanged between models. Hard means that you have automated scripts. One model produces an output. There is no manual interference except for maybe copying a file or uploading a file from one place to another place. And integrated basically means you have a single model. Um, a small example uh, which I find hugely fascinating is that hard linked models and integrated models, even if they model exactly the same thing, may still not end up having the same results. Uh, one of our PhD candidates is working at a link of a CGE model, TIMES, that you all know, TIMES Norway, an implementation of TIMES on Norway on the regional level, and REMES, uh, our own uh, 
Norwegian regional CGE. And when you take these models and you let them exchange data, hard linked, then um, CGE model will still do investments in the last period, because that's what CGE models do. The times model is an optimization model, and an optimization model will never invest in capacity in the last period, because there is no future to earn a return on the investment. So running them separately, the times model will never give you investments in the last period. However, if you link these models in a very small, yeah, basically toy data set type, we see that times will also invest in the last period because it is connected to the CGE and the CGE needs investments in every period. It needs capital. So that was the part on uh, the linking. Uh, there will be more tomorrow in one of the focus sections and in one of the posters. Now the floor to Gustav again. Thanks. So I continue with the linking in that sense to also show you how we practically are going to make that happen and how that will also serve uh, to uh, yeah, illustrate the outcomes and to make that open access. Uh, so in practical terms we are using uh, and we have developed a model integration platform where we plug <coughs> into the key assumptions, where we plug into the key outcomes of the models. For the case study works we are also of course working with bilateral exchanges because between the models since this platform is currently still under construction I mean it became operational quite recently but we are still in a validation phase so we want to improve the current implementation of an existing platform that was uh, that is existing at our partner institute YASA uh, and to make that more effective so allowing a better user experience also not only for our modeling teams but also for the uh, interested audience and to allow them also some further workflow and functionality improvements and sorry, sorry I'm right okay I think it should work now yeah um, so just to illustrate you that it's again on the means of a case study, but I probably skip for time reasons here the details. So it's the exchange between two models uh, where we would uh, have this workflow, the model integration workflow, uh, and export the results from one model and upload them to the platform. And then as a next step, hand over between the models and easy to use with an easy to use visualization also as a sort of version control it would then be allowed and a comparison to, to reference data and other models. And to show you how the platform practically looks like, so uh, it uh, has a certain database structure when we upload we have to follow here uh, in that sense database structure when we upload the data uh, and then at the end uh, where we of course have clear reference to the models to the versions that we are uploading and uh, where we also have the history of, of previous versions included and uh, then of course we then would further decide on once the validation process has ended to go uh, to, to the public with the consolidated outcomes and consolidated outcomes can then be also illustrated so it's not only a, a bunch of numbers that can be downloaded the platform would allow then also for some graphical interface to the user uh, and that is currently under construction and with that I have to say thanks on behalf of Setnav and yeah we would also, of course, like to invite you for tomorrow when we are going deeper into the discussion on how the linking of mods is done in the individual groups. Thanks again. Um, thank you uh, for your presentation. And, uh, you know, I have a question that goes a bit beyond what you do because um, 
um, linking models is not a goal by itself. It should be linked to the policy question that you want to address. And my question really is, you know, how will you work towards an understanding of what modeling functionality is required to address a very particular policy question? And how does your work, you know, uh, preempt on, on you know, expanding that knowledge? Because I get the impression now that you're just linking models. But my question, uh, you, you went into the why question, but I, I have a bit more questions on that why. Okay, then I give the direct answer now. Um, of course, we always start with the policy question. That's uh, the core issue. So we look first what might be interesting questions, what are some key issues. I mean, we all are somehow set here to the set plan teams, the key questions that are asked within the set plan, and we try to tackle them. And then we look, okay, what are our capabilities? What are uh, the things that we can try to answer with doing some quantitative analysis? And then we think on further, we thought on further how we can do that. But of course, I fully agree the central point, the starting point, is always the policy question that you are aiming uh, for, that you aim to provide an answer to. And then it often turns out that with one model you can nicely, in a nice way, look at a certain aspect of that question. But since we all have also learned in the morning session, it became more and more complex if we look to the energy system, if we have uh, a bunch of renewable energies that are variable in its generation uh, pattern, etc., if we have uh, the sector coupling more and more uh, coming uh, in the next years. So for a lot of these questions, it's not, at least in our thinking, that we have one tool where we can answer all the questions nicely and specifically also when it comes to the broader impacts, to the broader impacts to the society, I think an energy uh, system model can hardly tackle all the macroeconomic aspects. So we we have, at least in, in our project team, the core thinking that it's better to couple them different models with different strengths, with different limitations, then to try to answer everything with one tool, which would then have a broader set of limitations. And we are used to deal with these linkages. I mean, often it's a linkage of two or three models, which I am personally used to, but I think this adds really value to the analysis if you have the, uh, yeah models with different strengths, with complementary strengths. Okay. Question in, in okay, many thanks. Question in the back. Uh, my question is a bit also philosophical. Uh, how uh, do you validate um, the the model linking itself? And it's, is it enough to validate the single models? And or do you have also a strategy to to validate uh, based on historical developments the general output and so uh, and is that really I mean every validation or every model has its own errors and how is the danger of that you sum up errors and that's, which makes them yeah, compared to a single model where you have only validated one how do you handle this? Um, I mean, I think this is hardly to be answered, if I stay on the philosophical line, it's hardly to, answer, to be answered generally. This needs to be tackled case by case. Uh, but, for example, uh, one way of handling that practically, if you have, for example, an energy system model and a macroeconomic model, and each model and you're doing different exercises, you're doing, for example, a reference scenario, a baseline, however you call that, and then you always see the reaction of the model against that. 
and then of course each model should go for the calibration so the validation process on its own but then if you are changing that some of the input to the macro model uh, would now not be an endogenous input in the macro model it would come from an external energy model then uh, I don't think that yeah that would in general that much influence the, the error how to say magnitude of errors that would occur it's I mean I, I don't see this multiplying effect really happening in practice looking at practical examples practical lessons learned Okay, I have another question, um, because we have... I have one short comment, which is really not philosophical, and that is the fact that you are hard-linking models forces you to, uh, to make sure that the data can be exchanged. So you actually have an extra check that the data is valid, because if it's not valid, the other model will just not accept it or find really weird results. <laughs> Yeah, but having the syntax imposes that the contact is, is good. I have a question that goes to, to your comment uh, that you just made right now. Um, because when, when you say that you have soft and hard linked models, um, from my perspective, this is like just data exchange. Um, so if you don't talk about integrated models, you just pass data from one model to another. And um, if you have a soft link, then you just copy it from one to another and you do some magical transformation. And if you have a hard link model, you do this with a script or with a, this actually in my perspective, this is somehow um, a data exchange model, which is, an, which is a software itself. Um, so how do you how do you manage this software? Because you just have one model and the other, but there is a, a, another third model in the middle. And um, I don't read a lot about these data exchange models. Um, so do you keep track of them in, in the GitHub? Do you, um, do you integrate them in one of either models, or is it, is it a separate model? These adapters that we call them in Ream. Um, well, finally, for the... Uh, in the second stage of the project, for that, uh, we'll, we will make use of this uh, model integration platform where all the mods uh, plug into the results and uh, also uh, vice versa take out the, the results that they would need as an input to their model. Uh, but I agree, it's one can call that also a model. I know from when you are trying to do that button up, it can get quite complex, for example, this communication between a, a energy and a macro model where you then add some further details that go beyond what you are tackling in your energy model on its own. And I agree that that can also be called a model on its own. Um, yeah, I wanted to know what would be the methodological output of it. Will, do you intend to produce standardized ways of linking models beyond uh, your project, or is it only do you will, will you say at the level of linking this specific model with the others? Um, yeah, that was my question. Well, it's it's not that we have promised in our proposal something on linking models as a standardized output. Uh, so the practical answer would still be we are dealing with linking models within our project and we were asked to contribute here with a speech on that. But it's not a topic on its own within our project. So it's not a work package where we look at that specifically, but we can tell you some practical experience and of course it's a key issue if you have 16 partners, if you have 15 models in your uh, project, then it's a question that you need to tackle. 
but I don't promise that we come up with general guidelines. That might be too much. Behnam <laughs> Zakeri, Alto University, Finland. Uh, I would like to go a little bit beyond this uh, data exchange and I mean this, uh, for example, linking in terms of data. If you think about two models with two different uh, paradigms, with two different uh, framework, for example, you are making an uh, energy economic model with the optimization and you have some sector or agent within that that you want to, for example, represent that with some simulation. Do you have any insight on how we can connect, for example, these uh, two models in terms of framework and in terms of, you know, their uh, philosophy and paradigm behind the modeling? Thank you. I mean, in practical terms, I'm dealing exactly with that, that, for example, I'm often, I'm operating a uh, simulation model, which tries to tackle in more detail some policy-related questions, uh, tackling how different policy instruments function, and I'm coupling that, so I'm internally at um, my team often then coupling here the, uh, so, in, so it's a beta directional flow with a dispatch model. So, and that works very well. If you know what are the outcomes that you shift to the other model and what you then make use of uh, in the other direction. And, but I think we're getting deeper and deeper into the discussion and I don't want to spend too much time of the presentations to come about. I would again highlight here that there is a dedicated session on that, uh, on linking models tomorrow uh, in the afternoon and we would like to welcome you there. Okay, so in the end, indeed, uh, I think it will be a good time to end the discussion here. So let's give uh, another warm uh, round of applause.